and it reads, my childhood friends were mostly girls and I wonder if I should have been a girl. I don't feel very manly and I'm not attracted to girls. Should I follow through with these feelings and change my gender? Would God still love me if I became a woman? Wow. I'll take that question. It sounds like something that I would have written. This is Michael uh, Carducci. I want to start off uh, just definitely identifying with this question. Those were uh, the exact thoughts that I had in my mind. Uh, my first thoughts as I was a little boy coming into consciousness about four years old is that I thought it was a girl trapped in a boy's body. I didn't realize that there was a lot of damage that was done, not even before I was conscious, that was happening in my unconscious, but it was also happening in my DNA. And not only was there sexual sin in the DNA, um, which Exodus 20 verse 5 talks about the sins of the generations, the three to four generations. And while I was never, um, there was never anybody else that was transgender in my family, there was sexual sin. But at four years old, thinking that I was a girl, I didn't know how to make this transition uh, to becoming liked by the guys in school or or how to be more manly. And I, there was definitely a disconnect. I felt inadequate as a male, you know, but Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse five is very clear. And the question that this person is also asking is, should I transition to become a woman? Um, it says in Deuteronomy, the woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord. So I, I want to encourage the person that's asking this question that, um, God's not calling you an abomination. The abomination is when you practice these things. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I want to be very clear on this because it took many years, actually, until I was in my 40s before I started to understand what was really going on with these thoughts inside my head. But there was a disconnect between my dad, which began even before I was conscious. It's a term in, in psychology called defensive detachment. That meant that I didn't connect with my dad. I rejected my dad as my male role model. So the only example left was my mom. So before I was conscious, I was starting to imitate and emulate her. I didn't have any other examples of masculinity that was desirable to me. So I felt inadequate. I hung out with the girls. So then by the time I started school, then the boys started to pick up on my effeminate mannerisms. And the one thing that I needed was affirmation by the guys. But instead, I got more chastisement called little girl sissy. And so what that did is that pushed masculinity even further away from me. It made it even more um, uh, undesirable to me. So then, of course, by the time puberty came, I was thinking in my mind, the only way that I could be loved by a guy or accepted by a guy is if I was a girl, because it certainly didn't measure up as a man. You know, the Bible also says that our words have the power of life and death. And for anyone listening to this question that may be disgusted or disturbed, let me tell you something. You have the power of pronouncing life or death on anyone that you feel uh, may be disgusting or disturbing to you by calling them sissy or gay or the rejection. And what I needed was a solid um, person who was fine with their, their masculinity to just say, hey, you're a guy. You know, we accept you in the group. And you know something in my church, in my 40s, I actually found that. I found men that weren't afraid to interact with me or to approach me. And I think that this person asking the question is really looking to affirm their masculinity. They don't know how this thing got broken. It's a legitimate concern, but you're only exacerbating the problem by attempting to change your identity because science is very clear. Like our DNA is, is like our fingerprint on the inside and the inter internal DNA can never change. You can mutilate your body. You can make it appear to be female, but you cannot change your DNA. Why? Because God was very clear in Jeremiah. He says that before the earth was formed, I knew you and I knew you to be the male that I created you to be. And then in yeah. Psalms 139, God again is affirming to us that he's in pursuit of us and that his thoughts towards us are as countless as the sands of the seashore. And he goes on and on and says that you can go up to the heights and I'll still find you. You can go down to the depths and I'll be there. You can go into the darkness because darkness is the same as light to me. God is in loving pursuit of each one of us. And then he confirms it mm -hmm. through this, this, this affirmation. Psalms 139 is the transgender's hope. It says that I knit your delicate inward parts together in your mother's womb. It was not a mistake. You were not born in the wrong gender. The problem is not in your physical um, creation because I gave you that as a blessing. 
The problem is getting the mind to understand that there's a disconnect between the identity that I gave you. And what's really unfortunate is that so many people are buying into this lie that mm -hmm. they were created in the wrong identity and that they can actually have sex change and take hormones that will not only decrease your, your life expectancy, but also increase your rates of cancer. And you'll have to be on this for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But what it does do is it, it misunderstands the, the life-giving creator that gave you that identity as a male or a female. Now, we're not talking about somebody that's androgynous. We're not talking about somebody that has uh, ambiguous genitalia that was born with both. That's a very small percentage of the population. But when you're talking about the transgender issue, you're talking about somebody completely male, rejecting masculinity, wanting to be female. So again, God says in Psalms 139, as he knit your delegate and word parts together, that identity was a gift from God. And so anything that goes against that, which is also Romans chapter one, is that ultimately God gives us up because we serve the creature mm -hmm. rather than the creator who is blessed forever. So again, the rejection of the masculinity that I had was a real issue, but there are reasons why. And so I'm only going to exacerbate the problem more by trying to create um, in myself this identity that I think I am. Mm -hmm. rather than to allow God to affirm exactly who I am, not only through his word, but also through the ability to recognize that God is loving and he's pursuing me and that mm -hmm. he gave me this identity as a blessing. And that helped me to bring my identity and my Christianity together um, as a whole. Because no matter what I did to my body, there was no way that I was going to be able to change my DNA, which is, which is a firm and set.